Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden where things are really starting to warm up now. Beautiful golden spring sunlight filtering through the leaves. Admittedly, that intro would have made more sense if I filmed it yesterday, but we can at least pretend, can't we? Welcome to the garden, where as things are starting to heat up now, beautiful sunlight bathing the entire garden in its glow. It's time to start looking ahead at this year's summer tropical display. A lush jungle garden full of all kinds of big leaves, tender plants, and those house plants that have spent the long winter months inside can experience some sunlight again. Today's video, I'm talking about three planting mistakes when it comes to introducing these summer display plants outside. As always, there's never a right or wrong way of doing things, but these are three mistakes I've made myself and have learned from them. So hopefully some tips are included in this video that will help you if you're new to growing all these tropical style plants and simply want to create the best tropical holiday or jungle look in your garden this summer. So let's get started. So, as the rain falls around me once again, we'll pretend it's refreshing, I just want to go back to basics for a second. I know a lot of you are new to going to a tropical, jungle or exotic themed garden. You might have seen my garden tours from last year, you might have seen my trip to Mark's garden or Yorkshire Chris's garden, and you'll see at first glance there's a load of exotic plants, but those plants don't necessarily stay outside all year, and most exotic or tropical themed gardens are a selection of hardy exotics which stay outside all year long, perennials and plants that might need a bit of protection in the ground but then burst into life in spring and some plants have to be stored inside or in a greenhouse or polytunnel over winter before they can be reintroduced into the garden when it gets warm enough. I have done a video looking at when to plant out your summer tropical plants before, quite an old video when I first started my channel but I'll link to it somewhere up there so you can check that one out or put it in the description below. I'd like to think it was a logical and well thought out video but who knows, have a look at it and it'll give you some more thoughts on the topic. But at this time of year, it's the time we can start thinking about reintroducing the house plants, the plants that stay inside the polytunnel, the greenhouse for winter, as well as starting to think about the annuals we're gonna grow in that garden in summer. The annual plants, often tender, bring a lot of growth, a lot of color to the summer garden, and then by the end of autumn, they're chopped down and that's it, they've done their thing. So this time of year is an exciting time when you can mix up your garden, when you can really introduce some color. And as precious as the green, hardy, evergreen exotics are in winter, the bamboos, the trachycarpus palms. It's really at this time of year going forwards when a tropical garden really does its thing. When those bright bold colours, huge leaves, massive grasses really bring that exotic vibe that we're all looking for. So let me tell you then about the first mistake that you can make and it's a slightly predictable one. The first mistake then, slightly predictable like I say, but this one is planting out your summer tropical plants and tender plants too early. At this time of year, the UK always has such a frustrating mixture of weather. You never know whether it's gonna be a beautiful sunny week, whether it's gonna be gray, cloudy, and hovering around 10 degrees like today, or whether, like in the next couple of days here, we're gonna have a sudden and sharp frost. You never quite know. And these are all factors that can influence when you choose to plant all these plants out and how well they do once you plant them out. The other crucial factor that influences when you plant your plants out is your location in the country. On the south coast, especially areas like Cornwall, there's probably a good chance you can plant your Enseti, Colocasia, or your summer bedding out now, and it wouldn't be attacked by frost. Here, up north, you never quite know, but generally speaking, we're usually a few weeks behind. Personally, if you want a very rough rule, nowadays I tend to wait until the second week of May. That's the week that I aim for when I'm starting my seeds off, starting off the Enseti banana plants. I try to get everything ready for that week, because by that point, you can generally see a two-week forecast of the temperatures that are likely to come. Download the BBC Weather app or some of the more accurate source if you want. Have a look on there, and if there's no temperatures less than four degrees forecast, you should pretty much be okay. But honestly, the best things I would recommend doing are firstly, join the Facebook groups like the Tropical Jungle Style Gardening one. I'll put a link to that in the description below. See what other people are doing and check the weather forecast for the next two weeks. And any time around mid-May generally should be all right. And I say this as someone who's tried it from both ends of the scale. I've planted out my Enseti in the last week of April and I've got away with it. But there was definitely a few anxiety filled nights where there was temperatures dipping below four degrees and I didn't know if those magnificent new red leaves will get frosted away. And likewise, I've experienced the frustration of waiting until the second week in May and then seeing a frost forecast at the end of the month, which means it was early June before I could plant plants out. I think really it's a case of balancing optimism against the reality of what the UK weather might throw at us. But above all, you don't want to rush things. 
I would honestly say that in the past I have tried planting plants out early, but it's not just the anxiety, the potential for frost damage, but it's also the fact that they won't grow very well at this time of year. Today, for example, it's a very grey, wet day. It's only just above 10 degrees. We really hadn't had any significant warmth this spring, other than a few sunny, windy days this past week. So really, the soil's not as warm as it could be. And if you want more proof, look around you. The native trees are only just starting to leaf up. So really, is it the best time to start planting out tropical plants on the other side of the world? Probably not. So if I could say anything, is it's well worth waiting a little bit longer than you expect. Let the soil warm up a little bit, and that way your plants are gonna go from being in a lovely warm position in a tropical greenhouse nursery somewhere, or in your house or a polytunnel or greenhouse, to being plonked into cold, wet soil. That really will shock them. Best case, it will set them back a bit. Worst case, it could lead to rot, and those plants that you've nursed all winter might start to decline. You don't want that. You can always bring those potted plants outside, put them somewhere sheltered close to your house and let them grow on for a couple of weeks in pots and that way you remove all risk and if there is a sudden late frost forecast you can soon bring them in no problem at all. Easy said than done but you know what I'm getting at, don't rush to get your plants into the ground, there's very little to be gained and a lot to potentially risk. Like I said, not an exact science, but at the end of the day, we're growing experimental plants from all around the world in a rapidly changing climate, in a country where a garden at one end is completely different to another, when every single year is different. So there is no way I could produce a video saying plant out your tropical plants on the third week of May or anything like that. But as long as you have a quick look at the weather apps, see what's planned for the next couple of weeks, don't really rush anything much before May and also join the Facebook group, see what other people are doing. That way you stand the best chance possible of not getting caught out. Now the next mistake is on a similar theme. It's not hardening plants off and it's definitely a mistake that I've made myself. Don't worry, that's just blossom around the wacky, not snow. Although with today's weather, I think anything could happen really, so who knows. Now, hard enough then, it's a process I have talked about before, but to simplify it for you, it's essentially the process of acclimatizing a plant that's been grown either indoors in a polytunnel or greenhouse, or a plant you just bought from a nursery or garden center to the outdoor conditions. Those plants have been protected, sheltered inside, and it's time to get them garden ready. It's a process that can take from a week up to two weeks if you're really gonna put the effort in. Generally speaking, I think a week is about right, but it varies by plant. And what you do is you get that plant gradually used to the outdoor conditions that it will actually experience. And I think there's a few reasons for this. The first one is just simply the wind. A lot of those plants that have been grown inside, they're pushed out very weak leaves. They've had a lot of growth due to the extra heat, but they haven't had the light to support it. And with no external factors like wind, the leaves just get very leggy, they get very soft. So the plant needs about a week outside to really sort of harden up and start pushing out tougher leaves that are more built to cope with the wind. So that's the first step. Put your plant somewhere sheltered for a week or so and that way they get used to the wind. The second factor is UV. Now it's very tempting to think a lot of these exotic and tropical plants, they love the sun. So as soon as we get a full Sunday, chuck them outside and let them bathe in it. Well, imagine if you've been in a dark room for six months and then someone had pushed you outside without a shirt on on that first sunny day. I think you get sunburned and the same thing happens to the plants. I'm pretty sure you'll see people that buy moves of azure plants, they push them outside, they introduce the sun too quickly and they end up getting brown and literally sunburned. It's not gonna kill the plant, but you can avoid it by hardening the plant off and getting it used to the UV conditions. And again, very simple, keeping it somewhere sheltered with a bit of shade helps to avoid that damage. It's not likely to kill the plant, but it will get it off to the best start possible and avoid any cosmetic damage that you really don't want to see. The third predictable factor then is just temperature. If you put your plants straight from inside into that cold ground outside, not only will it shock them and potentially set them back, but they're also vulnerable to late frost damage. Whereas if you again keep them in their pots, somewhere sheltered, somewhere shaded close to the house, not only will they be protected from the worst of the cold, but if there is an actual late hard frost forecast, you can bring them inside, cool them up with fleece, put them into the polytunnel for that night. And that way nothing is lost. You're not fretting, going around your garden, trying to cover things up. You will forget things. So definitely you need to introduce your plants slowly to not just the wind, but the UV and the cold as well. What I will say is when it comes to hard enough, you soon learn that certain plants like Inseti generally have tougher leaves, they don't get sunburnt too much, and you can probably get away with just pushing them outside somewhere sheltered for a few days and then planting them in your garden. 
Whereas other plants like coleus are very, very tender plants and they don't like much less than 10 degrees. So if you plant them out at the same time as your insetti, then they can actually get a bit shocked and start to lose leaves. You don't want that. So really, if you want to have, again, a very broad figure of what you want to do, I would say keep your plants outside for about a week, keep them somewhere sheltered, somewhere shaded, close to your house, and that way you can bring them in if you need to, to protect them from a cold, frosty night. But also, it lets them get used to a bit of the wind, a little bit of sunlight, and a bit of that exposure without actually forcing them into it with no return. When it comes to these mistakes then, it's completely understandable. Here in the UK, our summer months are so precious and short that it's completely logical to want to extend that season, to make the most of it. I know it's something that I've done before and chances are I will end up doing it again. So don't worry if you have been caught out this year. A lot of the time, if the plants get nipped by a late light frost or they get some sunburn on the leaves, it is just cosmetic damage and a lot of them will bounce back into growth. Something I probably should mention is it's not just tender plants that I talk about when it comes to hard enough and planting out too early. It's also hardy plants, but ones that are actually in active growth. So to give you an example, Scheffleras, Gunnera, Tejpanax, if you've just bought one and it's growing away well, and plants in your garden aren't growing away, then chances are you need to treat that plant as tender. Just this first season, yes, it can take the frost and the cold, hopefully next winter and beyond, you can plant it out. But just while it's growing away, you want to give it the best start possible and not set it back. So I treat them as tender, and generally speaking, don't plant out any plants with soft growth like that until around mid to late May, just to be on the safe side. But the third mistake, well, this one, it's not so much a practical one, but more a garden design, a planting one, but one that you can definitely improve or decide how your summer garden is going to look this year. So let me tell you a bit more. The third mistake then, again, it's the result of rushing, a bit of a theme running through this video. You've waited until the right time to get your plants in the ground. You've hardened them up properly, but then you just rush to get them in the ground without thinking about an overall design or how the plants are gonna look in summer. You won't plant a tree or any of the structural plants like bamboo or palms without having an idea in your head of how they're gonna grow and develop. It's still important to do that for cannas, gingers, dahlias, all the plants that go in your ground for the summer months. Yes, you can move them next year, but you want to try to create the best looking display this year. And I think it's probably just as important with annuals like ricinus because of how fast and how big they grow. With these plants, personally, I'd recommend two things. Firstly, seeing as you're on YouTube, go to my other video section and have a look at some of my summer garden tours. Mark's garden, Chris's garden, the other gardens that I've been to, where you'll see a lot of these summer tropical plants really doing their thing. And then you might get an idea of just how big the cannas grow, how big ricinus gets. And secondly, just have a quick Google of these plants before you put your summer plant in the ground, whether it's something you've just grown from seed at a whim, something you bought from a garden center on impulse, yes, well done that. Just have a look at how big it's like to be in the summer, because not only can you create a better looking display with a little bit of thought, but it's also very easy to get this idea of looking at a small plant, a small canna, or maybe even the riceness again, and thinking, that's a lovely foliage plant. I can see that working well down there but you might not realize that that down there will be up there by mid-August, potentially even bigger. And I think the other reason why this is so important when it comes to a tropical or exotic garden is that we grow a lot of plants in the ground all year long. The structural evergreens, the palms, the bamboos, the tree ferns, and those plants, they really want to thrive for years and years, hopefully as long as possible. So you don't want to shade them out during the months when we get the best weather, the most sun for them, particularly when it comes to palms. So the last thing you want to do with a palm is plant some dainty looking cannas in front of it, just to find out that by mid-June, that plant is completely blocked out behind them. And those cannas will be racing up, taking up all the light in the water. So it is worth a bit of consideration. It's worth a quick Google, a look on YouTube at other people growing these tropicals in the UK to get an idea of how big they get and how they will look in summer. I know it's hard to believe right now, but tiny little plug plants, little seedlings that you're growing on will get big, but I assure you they definitely will. And it's important to have a garden with a little bit of design to it and at least not block out the plants that you really want to enjoy for years to come. So it's definitely well worth looking and actually having an idea of what the plants that you're sowing or planting out now will actually grow into. A quick Google takes two minutes and at least that way when you're setting the plants out you've got an idea of what they will develop into. And if you want to see what happens when you don't take this advice and you just put every plant you want to go in the ground look at this quick phone video from our first board well our it was my mistake this one my first border at our first house and you'll get an idea of it. 
I wanted to grow so many plants. It was the first time I could grow in the ground. I grew loads of rice in this, all these giant plants, annuals that go to three meters plus, put them on the ground. And the end result definitely looked a little bit jungly. Okay, a little bit, it looked too jungly in fact. It didn't have the design, the balance or the depth that I would now like to create in a garden. So definitely it's worth a little bit of consideration. You've grown all these plants from tiny little seeds, little plug plants, you've kept them lovingly all winter. It's worth putting a bit of thought into what that summer display will look like. And even if you're new to this, there's no excuse. Have a look at the videos, have a look on Google and get an idea of what the end result might look like. And hopefully it will be here very soon. The rain's really starting to come down now, so I'll wrap the video up. I hope it's helped you hearing about these three mistakes, mistakes that I've made in the past for myself, and you potentially might avoid making them this year. But if anything goes wrong, if your plants get caught by a late frost, if they get burnt by the sun, and if your border doesn't quite evolve into the idea that you had in your head, don't worry about it. A lot of these plants are incredibly resilient. And when it comes to the overall look of your garden, for me, one of the greatest things about growing a tropical style garden is that you can move things around, completely change the display next year. Because a lot of these plants like cannas, gingers, dahlias, you can dig them up, move them around. You can grow different annuals next year. It's all a game of experimentation, trying things differently, really going for a different look. Sometimes you stumble by complete chance onto a plant combination that really works. Other years, it doesn't come together quite as well as you hope, but that's gardening. And it's all about evolving, improving your garden over time, and really getting a lot out of that. And yes, I know a lot of this planting out at the right time, hardening plants off, overwintering, it is all a lot of faffing around. It can seem complicated if you haven't done it before, but it gets easier every year. You soon learn how to make it more efficient and fit your garden, your location. But nothing beats the feeling, well, few things beat the feeling of early June, knowing that all your tropical plants are in the ground, the sun's shining, there's a warm couple of weeks ahead, everything's watered, everything's fed, and you can almost hear the plants growing. And you know you've got about four months of seeing these plants race up towards the sky, huge leaves, beautiful blooms, amazing growth. That really is a great feeling indeed. So hopefully we can all experience that very, very soon. Thanks as always for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested in growing this style of garden, check out my garden visits on my channel. There's hopefully some inspiring garden visits in there that will really help you out. Cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See you later.